What's up guys, MGH here and welcome to a different video this evening. I hope you're all enjoying your week and uh, earlier on in the week I said on Twitter would you guys like me to make a video discussing Arsenal, you know, how the season's gone, um, what kind of signings I think we should be trying to make in January and what we should be doing uh, towards the end of the season. We're only, well, we're just over halfway, right? So it's that kind of time of year where, you know, you've got the month of January to bring in any players that you think that your team might need uh, to really push for whatever your targets are for that season. And I think for Arsenal, it's one of the biggest I can remember. You know, this January is so, so huge for us. I thought, I've got to make a video. So what you're looking at right now, in my opinion, is our strongest team at the moment. Lots of players are injured. And I think this team, what you're looking at right now, Based on, you know, match fitness and players that are available right now, this is the best team we can put out. With on the bench, we've obviously got Walcott, we've got Campbell, Rosicki, Chesney, Bellerin, Monreal, Flamini. Um, but for me, this is the team that I think we could put together as basically our strongest team. Now, for me, that means obviously Gibbs... Oh, shit, I've left Debussy in. Debussy is injured. So Bellerin goes in and Debussy is on the bench. Um, we'll put in Chambers there for now, but whatever. Now that Debussy is obviously out till um, April, I think it is, with his dislocated shoulder, Bellerin will be taking his place at right back. Um, Chambers, I think, is back soon, right? But anyway, I, I was thinking, you know, our best back four is Gibbs, Koscielny, Murtasaka and Bellerin. Obviously, Debussy when he is fit or Chambers. Ospina in goal. It's a, it's a really difficult subject, this, you know. Just, just before I get into it more, guys, I just want to say this video is completely random. I've got no script. I've got, I've got no points to make. It's just I'm going to talk and discuss things. It might be a really long video, so hopefully you're okay with that. But for me, Ospina and Chesney is a very delicate subject because what you've got is Ospina, who lacks Premier League experience. Does it matter in a goalkeeper? I think it does. I really do. I think every league is different. Um, and obviously, he's only recently started to play in the first team. He made his debut in the Premier League last weekend. Chesney, for me, would still play if he was, you know, fully match fit and, you know, full of confidence. But right now, I couldn't put him in goal. After what happened at Southampton, it's got to be Ospina for me for now. Maybe Chesney will come back soon. In midfield, I think Coquelin, since coming back from his loan, he is fantastic in midfield, or he has been fantastic. There is a little bit of worry, you know, for me. You know, you saw him, he made a massive tackle towards the end of one of the games recently. And ever since then, I've kind of just lost a bit of confidence in him because he's got that mentality that maybe he may not stay calm the whole game. Maybe he would get sent off towards the end of the match. Or maybe it's just lack of experience because obviously he hasn't played in the Premier League much. He did go off loan to Charlton, wasn't it? So he got called back. And since coming back, he's been a really, really good player. And uh, actually very impressive. He doesn't look like the player that, you know, he looked a couple of years ago. He looks much more confident on the ball. He's making good tackles. And for me, would go in this team, you know, way, way more than Flamini would. I, I, I would play Cochrane ahead of Flamini every single day of the week. Um, the big worry for me, though, is against teams like Man City. You know, can we get away with Cochrane in midfield? I don't know. Then Cazorla. Now, Cazorla, don't get me wrong, he is not a CDM. This is just a FIFA formation. For me, Cazorla would actually be, you know, almost up here. And um, then you'd have Coquelin kind of coming into the middle more uh, like this. It's a bit slow, isn't it? But um, Cazorla would be in this first team. He has to be. And for me, I actually prefer him down the middle than on the wings. For me, Sanchez has to go out on the left. I think he is much, much more effective out on the left than he is on the right. Although he is one of those players that can probably, he could probably play anywhere and still have a really big impact on the game. He's been by far our best player. He's been carrying us this season and uh, he is due a massive upgrade, if you ask me. If he is not 86 rated in his upgrade, I'll be really disappointed. He's better than Ozil. He's better than Kazola. He deserves to have at least 86. Ozil, I think, should come down to an 85 maybe. I don't know, but... Um, for me, Sanchez is our best player and he should be the highest rated in FIFA, but that doesn't really matter too much. For me, out on the left, he just causes much more trouble. He cuts in onto his stronger right foot. He unleashes amazing shots, passes, crosses, everything. And uh, for me, that's his best position. Ozil in the middle, now he's come back. If he's not fully fit, you know, not fully match fit, then obviously I would play Cazorla there and uh, bring in, well, probably Arteta. And he, uh, Not Arteta, sorry, Flamini. You can see I've got Schleid in there. That'll be later on in the video. Um, Oxlade out on the right, I think, since Sanchez has joined Arsenal. Oxlade looks as if he's learning from him a lot. He's making much more direct runs, and he can be a real handful. 
and he's Arsenal through and through for me. I love this guy. I love Oxlade Chamberlain and would definitely play. Um, but obviously, if um, Walcott is fully match fit, he's got to play, hasn't he? So it's a bit of a difficult one that. Um, let's put those back. Doesn't look right. Up front, it's got to be Giroud, in my opinion. When he is playing, we are a lot more effective in holding up the ball up front, getting uh, more of our players in positions to make good opportunities to score. However, when Welbeck is fit, you know, what do you do? I don't think Welbeck gets near the team. It's, it's a really difficult thing to talk about because Welbeck, you know, since joining, has played a lot of matches. When Giroud was out with his broken whatever it was, his shin was it? I'm not sure. Um, Welbeck played up front. He did okay. Nothing amazing. You know, he... he He's Welbeck, you know, what What do you expect? He's not going to be a world beater. But for me, whenever Giroud is in the squad, we seem to do pretty, pretty well. And I think with Ozil, Sanchez and Oxlade behind Giroud, the link-up play often is pretty disgusting. It's amazing. And uh, for me, this is the best team that we can put up at the moment. But what is our best team? Like when everyone's fully fit? Well, it gets, it gets really difficult because for me, Santi Cazorla cannot be dropped. So for me... I think it goes something like this. We then have Ramsey there and Arteta there. And obviously then we have Debussy there. And I think I think probably Chesney does come in. I think what you're looking at there is our best team. But is it good enough? Now this is the main part of the video. What do we do to make this team better? Now that Arteta is out for three months. It's just come out this... I think it's the last 24 hours it's come out. He has had a setback. He's got to have some surgery. He'll be out for three months. Debussy is out till April. You know, what, what, what can we do this January? Well, for me, there has to be two massive signings. One, a CDM, and the other, a centre-back. There's, there's no other way. If Wenger can't see that, I've got no faith in him. <laughs> he must be able to see it. If, million, if millions of people can see it, every Arsenal fan you talk to knows we need a central defence midfielder. We need a centre-back. We've got two centre-backs. It's crazy. That's, that's been since the start of the season. I still don't understand what Wenger was smoking that day when we signed Welbeck and no one else. Like, what, what is going through his head? Oh, we've got two centre-backs. That should be fine for 38 Premier League matches. All the Champions League fixtures, the FA Cup, the League Cup. Surely something in his brain was screaming at him to realise we need a centre-back. And we don't have a proper central defensive midf midfielder. We've never replaced one since the days of Vieira, Gilberto Silva. We haven't replaced that player. And that's what we need. So let's quickly go down to the bottom here. I've added lots of players here um, that I think you know would be very good signings for Arsenal and ones that are linked. I've also created Bielik, who has just signed for Arsenal. He's going to have his medical tomorrow. Um, he is a 70-year-old 70? 17 year old Polish midfielder. Um, I've just made him now. It's obviously not accurate, but he is 17 years old. He's six foot two and plays in the middle of the park. Um, and apparently that's going through. So great news. And no, I haven't made him 69 um, because that's what I think his rating will be. It's just random. It just happened to be 69. Um, I don't know what rating he would be in FIFA, but I'm hoping it'd be at least the mid 60s. That'd be nice to see. But the, the signings that I think, you know, that are, are really good for Arsenal would be Schneidlin, Cavalio. We've then got Mings, Cher, Van Dijk, uh, Reed, not Reid, and Moreno. These are all players that have been linked with Arsenal. And I think it's pretty simple, really. If we want to, you know, make this team better, make it possible to potentially get third place, fourth place, to go far in the Champions League, we need to be signing Schneidlin. Now, now, for me, he should be our number one target. Schneiderlin is a proved midfielder in the Premier League. For Southampton, he has been fantastic. He exactly fits our DNA. He's a passer. He's got great vision. And he's a tackler. Now, don't get me wrong. He doesn't completely replace, you know, the likes of Vieira, Gilberto Silva, because he's not a massive unit. He's only 5'11". But you know what Wenger's like? He doesn't sign big players like that anymore. And I'm sure he's looking at Schneidlin, and I think he'd be a perfect signing. However, if that doesn't go ahead, then for me, it has to be... Where is he? Cavalio. Now, Cavalio was someone we were linked with in the summer. It didn't quite go ahead. I don't think we wanted to pay the extra three million they wanted or something like that. This guy is a, a very close replacement to Vieira, Gilberto Silva. Those two examples are the ones I used because they were big players. They were commanding midfielders. They sat in front of our defence, and they did a very tidy job there. I think Cavalio is the closest we can get to that. And I think he would be a very astute signing. I really like Cavalio. He's young. 
He's probably really hungry to do well in the Premier League if he was to come here. And uh, he would play very well alongside Ramsey, I think. It'd be a great little pivot there. However, I would personally go with Schneidlin. I think he would be a better fit. So Schneidlin, for me, goes straight in the team. Now, with defenders, I think we should be signing two of them. One of them in January and one of them in summer. Now, for me, this, uh, this window, we've got to bring in someone who can play at centre-back. It's got to be Van Dijk, Reed, Moreno or someone else. I know we were linked with, uh, was it Gabriel from uh, Villarreal, I think it is. Um, we're also linked with Perrin from uh, St. Etienne, which apparently isn't going ahead now. Mings is actually a centre-back these days. I believe he can play on the left, like in his FIFA uh, position there. He's a bit young for me, 21. He's not proven. Would he be a good backup? Well, to be honest, I'd rather play Chambers at centre-back than Mings. So for me, I've just put him here because he has been linked. I don't think that should be the signing we make. But for me, one of the most important things we need to do this this January is sign up share on a contract so he joins us in the summer. He has got six months remaining. He's got to be a priority. This guy looks really good. I watched him against Liverpool and he just looks like such a confident sorted centre back and I would love him in FIFA. I really would. I would love to have him in Arsenal for FIFA 16. That'd be absolutely awesome. Um, but for me, definitely someone we should be looking to sign up and uh, so he could join us in the summer. But for me, Centre-back is a little bit of a difficult one in January because there are so many centre-backs we're linked with. I'd be happy with Van Dijk. I'd be happy with Reed, I guess, as a backup centre-back. Premier League experience, would he be worth it? I know Big Sam would want to take a lot of money uh, off Wenger <laughs> to, try and, uh, to try and sell Reed for as much money as possible. I know Van Dijk would probably be uh, a good signing. Would he want to join Arsenal? I'm pretty sure he would, although he seems pretty happy in Celtic. We'll, we'll soon find out, but... You know, I, I want to say this. This is something that I said at the start of the season when the window was shut. We started to have a poor few games. I said to everyone in a Skype call, I said in a video, I believe, um, if Wenger doesn't manage to adequately sign players this January to help us, it's going to be very, very difficult to, to believe in this squad. I believe in the players we've already got, but what I don't believe in is those gaps. And... I feel like, you know, the longer we leave it, the worse we could possibly get. Um, I'm not going to say, you know, Wenger out, he needs to go. But I need to say this. If we, you know, fail to make top four, and that's majorly because we didn't bring in any players in the, in the January transfer window, then it's a different story, you know. And then what he will say is, if, let's say we get into the summer, we did pour in the second half of the season, we missed out on the top four, and he says, there was no one available in January and uh, there's no point signing. Fucking bollocks. I don't care what you do. You do what you have to do to make it possible. If that, mean, if that means bringing in a, a signing that, you know, may be a bit too expensive. He may be a little bit more than what he's actually worth. It's what you do. If we miss out on top four, we're fucked, you know? It's just simple as that. You've got to make a signing, Wenger. You've got to bring some players in. And, um, you know, these signings that I've been talking about, Schneiderlin would be an absolute dream signing for me. I'd love him to join Arsenal this January. Um, I don't see it happening. I don't think Wenger will be willing to pay whatever it is, 25 million for him. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm going on far too much. Where do I think Arsenal are going to finish this season? Honestly, I think we will get fourth. I think we always do, and we will this season. Um, who do I think will finish third? Well, obviously, Chelsea, Man City first and second. I'm still not 100% sure who will win it. I've, I've said Chelsea since the start, but I don't know. I'm starting to see, you know, maybe Man City rising up. I don't, I don't know. It's a difficult one. We've obviously we've got Man City this weekend. That'll be a big game. If City lose that, then I, I'd probably go with Chelsea. But if City beat us, I'll probably go with City, you know. Um, so I think fourth, I think third, I, I probably think Man United will get it. I, I, I don't know. It's going to be between Man United and Arsenal for third and fourth. Um I don't know what other teams could be there. Southampton, West Ham, Tottenham, you know, who, who's going to be there? Fourth, fifth, sixth? It's a real difficult one. But anyway, that's um, that's where I think we'll come. I think we'll finish in fourth or third if we're lucky. I think Wenger will be bringing in some signings. You know, we've signed up Bielek. He's got his uh, his medical tomorrow. I think he will bring in another player, hopefully a, a centre-back. And then hopefully, just maybe, he will bring in a CDM as well. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Sorry for rambling on so much. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time.